or Chinese or other uh, specific countries are meeting like researchers in China or researchers in Germany or researchers in Egypt where they're talking always where they're communicating in, in their language yes at nature discussions in German and if, if so yes uh, which yeah, so um, most of the conversations on nature take place in English. Um, we do have a specific geographical corpus, so we have things like Nature India, but that's actually written in English, and we have Nature Middle East corpus as well, but that's also written in English. Um, we do have a part of Nature Publishing Group, um, a blogging arm called Silox, and they do have a German site, silox.de, and they do blog in German. So, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Which, which question? Does it depend on the discipline? Was the question? Okay. The question is whether social sciences use different languages or maybe rather local languages than um, natural sciences? I cannot answer this question. No. Lou? Would you, would you think so? Do social sciences use local languages more than natural sciences? I think that was the question, yeah. Yes? Yeah? So, um, this is not, I mean, we don't have a lot of coverage on social sciences, for example, on um, blogs or people's online nature networks. It's not really an area that we have a lot to do with. I know that, um, you know, I think NPG policy has been to try and keep the conversations as widely accessible as possible, so English has tended to be a working language for those, with some exceptions of these specialist blogging sites, for example. Um, we are doing things like, um, this year, we're doing coverage of the Lindau Nobel Laureate meeting again in social media, and that includes an official blog, and that does have um, blogging taking place in English, in German, in Chinese, and in Spanish this year. So, mm. um, so it's one example where we're trying to make things more to it. Yeah. Well, again, from the journalistic point of view, um, until now, the colleagues wait for the end of the week and then they look what's in science and what's in nature and they try to find out what the major topics are. I think we had the question earlier. I'm not sure if we, we answered it um, uh, exclusive, uh, inclusively. Um, would you say that the network behind nature is already not as relevant, but at least so relevant that journalists will have to check it in order not to miss an important topic? Maybe topics that that might yeah. pop, pop up in the network, not in the journal. No, no, some of us we spend our entire life online, and we may be up to these things on a sort of minute by minute basis. But obviously, that everybody else is so we doing that. I think you know, there's an importance of rounding up um, what's happening. It's back to this idea of having filters and gatekeepers and things again. So um, you know, one of the quickest ways to find out what's going on on the nature network. Is um, we do a Friday editorial roundup, so we pull out the best, most topical posts on the site, and then we round up a blog post on the team blog on a Friday. Um, Blogs.nature.com, the aggregation site, which is looking at blogs more widely across the internet, science blogs, that is, um, that will pull out top stories, um, and it will pull out popular papers that are being blogged about as well. And then um, there are also various discussion series. So we're doing a monthly discussion series now called Science Online New York City or Sonic, but that's being live streamed and uh, tweeted every month as well so anybody anywhere in the world can take part in and it's then written up and the idea behind that is to provide a regular forum for discussion of topics that are pressing urgent things that people want to have more in-depth conversations of so again that might also be an indicator of stories of interest which means that you act as an aggravator of your own content if you were if you want and not only of your own content this this friday collection for instance yeah. but also the this this meta analysis of science blogs all over the world where you try to the gather the most important science blogging conversations and then providing a platform for scientists to actually come and have those conversations in person with us because i don't think anybody expects that online conversations are are or should replace real life interaction the kind of networking that you can do and the kind of projects that are built in the real world often require a face to face meeting as well okay how many how many blogs do you cover can you can you estimate how many science so, blogs so nature network has a um, suite of about 75 different blogs that are active um, within say a six month period so we have between 30 and 40 active independent blogs each month out of a pool of about 75 in a six month period our aggregator is over 1200 
1,200 blogs. Yeah, okay. 1,200 blogs. I was looking at a lot of sites blogs online. That's about 10,000 postings a month or something like that, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many per month, but yeah, that's trying to get a, a good overview of what's being said. There's also the other thing actually flag up is quite interesting, although it's only in a kind of experimental stage, is something called Streamer Sphere. So that basically takes um, known active users in um, science communication online and it looks at their um, Facebook pages if they've made them look at their activity on things like friend feed on Twitter and it aggregates popular conversations. So that's another way of finding out whatever it is that people are talking about science. Okay, thank you. Further questions? Yes, please. I have a question. Do you, you write here um, connections between scientists or uh, people like Facebook or Facebook? Do you write and um, visualize certain products or do I think I'll hand over the question to, to you in a minute. Or oh, you, you are nodding. <laughs> no, no. We we actually wanted to invite uh, biomed experts here. Um, uh, I think they they do quite a good job about that, mostly in in the area of biomedicine. Um, also gave a presentation the other day where you could uh, there's there's tools where you can analyze who cites whom, for instance. And when you take um, uh, genetic engineering, you see, genetic engineering, you see that um, American scientists are heavily citing themselves, whereas European scientists tend to mostly cite um, American scientists and not the, among themselves. So things like that you can analyze and, and visualize in a, in a graph. Ah, um, I want to say what you mean. Okay. Yeah. We have that. Uh, can you connect our... Okay, we just connect it to the screen. Hold on. Where do I put... Ah, here, okay. Hold on. Can I try to film this? Uh, Lou is showing something on the screen, not that you're wondering. <laughs> okay. So that's the initial graph of the uh, So now you can now you can go through the names and click edit. Click on them. And then you can see um, who they're connected to, and now he's calculating the new uh, the new connections. So that takes a little, a little while. Um, and then based on that, you can go through the publications from this person, um, and also from uh, um, from the publications. You can also add. You can see that here. You can also you know publications and groups. Um, uh, or you can sort all the, also the contacts. You can say sort them by interests or by department or number of contacts. So if I take this now here, so now we can He sorts the people who have thirty. I don't see from here thirty-five to fifty contacts, and these are the people who have this amount of contact. And then I can click on that again, and can you know? And then he's showing me the people who have connected to this person have more than X. Uh, in more than these, well, this number of contacts. Um, what also is um, yes, yes, yeah, um, and also you know you can, as I said, or you can say number of groups the person is in, number of publications the person has, based on interest, department, professional, country. So you can select and can sort these people and can click through that. Um, and this is dynamic. Biomed expert is calculated only, but but is using only publications. Uh, we use um, publications, groups, and the, the real connection between the people. So if I'm following you and you're following back, it's a it's a, a, um, a bidirectional following. So this again means that we're putting you here into this graph, and then we you can click through the people. Um, and yeah, and you don't have to double click on it. You can see. Uh, if you want, uh, you click once on the person, and then you can see on the right hand side some information about the person before you before you send to the person again. Yeah. This is. Um, I think you need for this one. Yeah, for this function you need research data. But everyone can get that. Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't let you see my Facebook. <laughs> that was overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs>
Is that a scientist that you're interested in that might want to look up? <laughs> I, I think that the point is that it could be done with, with other data as well, or it is done with other data. There are other tools that aggregate some citations, and all this could end up to some overviews of public who's publishing, who's publishing in this field, which topic is hot at the moment. It's, they can be time-based or topic-based or location-based and everything. There are, I think there are several tools that are not as good, but or I mean they work in different fields. You know? For example, I mean the Holy Grail would do have such thing with citations, you know, which paper cited and which paper. And I think even Tom Noy does this. Yeah. Still yeah, but it's, 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 it's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's even still a research topic. So yeah, 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 it's a research topic itself. Exactly. Network analysis, I mean, we deal with it as well. Research so, network analysis is a very complicated topic because it all depends in the end on the quality of the data that you, that you grab. And um, that usually is not a standardized, uh, doesn't work like that, or as uh, it's supposed to be. But in the end, again, it's, it's a question of transparency. What you can do here, you could never do by going into the debate or uh, yeah. trying to do the research in the library. I mean, you could do it, but in particular years, here in that case, depending on the quality of the data that lies behind it, still you could do it within an instant and see, oh, you know, there are people quoting each other all the time. Well, what, what I found useful at right at the moment are some tools that suggest something for yourself based on your prior uh, selection. For example, just start with PubMed and it comes up with some good ideas of uh, publications that are similar to the ones that you typed in. In social, in social networks, you have some publications that you read in the past, it shows up some publications that you might be interested in. So this is the benefit that I have today from these tools on a daily basis. I found some publications in PubMed or for example in ResearchGate that I wasn't aware of and I didn't find it because I had I didn't use a particular a search word or the, the keyword that, that I use for my publications or for similar publications but it just found based on other keywords that were shared it found something that was in the same, in the same field that I did. Okay. It's in yeah, it's in PubMed, it's in ResearchGate, and this is uh, already a use that we have today from these things, I guess. For example, so many call, more. Yeah. So we call Amazonization, yeah, Amazon, yeah, yeah. Amazonization, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, like you get yeah, crowdsourcing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People who bought this might also be interested in that and things like that. Yeah. To to put this into science is something that publishers have been doing for a long time. That when you, yeah. you downloaded an article, of course they had a, a native exactly. in interest in selling you more articles, so they yeah. gave you um, allusions. The thing now is that you can spread this across several publications, across all scientific areas, if you want. Um, again, the question, of course, is how, how good is the data behind it and how good is, is, um, yeah. is the linked data quality as well? Yeah, I appreciate this tool on Nature, for example. They have good results within Nature publishing group, but it, so I try all the different tools yeah. and they all give me different results and some of them are really unique and useful. Maybe quickly to, Lou, uh, to you, Lou, we were just discussing the network.